Hi everyone and welcome to this, my video on finding an angle, part of the trigonometry section or the right angle triangle section of this course. Lovely to see you, thank you. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. You're going to say where? And I'm going to say Maths Guru. I love spelling that over and over again. Not, if you head over there, uh, basically you'll be able to watch these videos in order and look at all the downloadable lesson notes we've got behind me and exam questions and so, so much more. Hopefully I will see you there soon. And before I get started, will you subscribe to my YouTube channel, please? Uh, again, very needy. I love creating content. I love creating these videos and everyone tells me I should be off doing humorous videos. Now, nah, I want to do this. I want to help students and hopefully I'm going to help you with this video. So if you can subscribe, um, it, it's just awesome. It means the world to me. And to get three extra subscribers at the end of every day just blows me away. So thank you very much if you can do that for me. Right, what am I going to do? Know how to use trig ratios to help you find the size of an angle. Now in previous videos we've actually looked at being able to find um, missing side lengths. So how do we find missing angles? Well believe it or not, exactly the same way. You're still going to use Sokotoa, but what I need you to realize is that actually if I go sine theta equals a half. Now in a previous video, your calculator knew that that was 30 degrees. It knows that the sine of 30 degrees is a half. How? Well, your calculator has a pretty funky way of being able to reverse all this, or it remembers them all, either way. But what if I wanted to get theta on its own here? What if I wanted to get that theta alone? At the moment, it's stuck to the sine. How would I get rid of the sine? Now this is a really bad analogy and lots of math teachers will cry when I do this. But what I tend to do is this, is I want to move that sine to the other side. I want to get rid of it. I can't divide by sine, I can't do, so what we do is use something pretty funky and I say theta is equal to. Now when I move the sine to the other side, what happens is I write it as sine with a little minus one. And that half goes in brackets, so the sine changes to sine with a little flowny minus, uh, minus one, so that's actually inverse sine. We're inversing, which means backwards, so we're doing backwards sine. So we're saying to the calculator, can you tell me, by going backwards and telling me what angle it is, if the side ratios of my sine is a half? Hmm, hold on a moment. If we go back to my calculator and fire up my trig function, well, the ones we've been using lots are sine, cosine, and tan, yeah? But what do you notice directly below them? Sine with a floaty minus one, cos with a floaty minus one, and tan with a minus floaty one. So these are our reverse operations, our inverse operations. This is when I'm given a ratio and I want to find an angle. Oh, okay, so that's gonna come in pretty handy now. But again, recapping, hopefully you don't need to recap because you've watched all my previous videos, but the most important part here for every single triangle is making sure you label the sides correctly. If you don't label the sides correctly, and more importantly, have your calculator in DEG mode, you're not gonna get the right answers for any of these questions, All right? So I tend to find that where people go wrong here, there's two things. One, they substitute incorrectly. Two, they use the algebra badly, all right? So you've got a summary book over here in Australia. Use it. If you don't, then you're just going to have to memorize it. Sorry, guys. Right, so we're going to reverse my trig ratios. So again, if I look here, we've got some examples here of sine to the minus one of a half. So what would that look like in a question? Well, here is my triangle. Here is theta. Right, we don't know what the angle is. All they've given me is the ratio of sides, but we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we know my opposite side length would be one, my hypotenuse would be two. So that would be my triangle that would describe this question here. So if I had that question and it wanted me to find the size of my angle, I now have a way of being able to do it because I can do this sine to the minus one of my side ratios and it will give me the size of the angle that would create that triangle. And that's the most important part here. There is only one angle that will provide a side length of an opposite of one and a tri of two that is sine, okay? So a hypotenuse of two and an opposite of one. There's only one triangle that will have that, and that is the one that has 30 degrees in this corner here. What does this cos to the minus one of a half be? Well, again, if I have this angle here as theta, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent would be one and the hypotenuse would be two. So in that situation, if I have a triangle where my adjacent is one and my hypotenuse is two, 
that will have an angle there of 60 degrees. And tan to the minus one, again, will give me an angle of 45 degrees. So we're now gonna be using our calculators to find inverse angles. Now again, they may not give us an even question. They may actually make life a bit easier for us. And they just give us, so we'll say, well, if sine theta equals 0 0.3907, 